Hi quilty friends and welcome to my little spot in Podunk. My name is Leanne and today we're going to be making this scrappy framed pinwheel. I've used low volume prints in the background and different red fabrics. Okay, I wanted to stop right here and talk about my fabrics. I've been collecting fabrics for a long time, um, but I realize everybody hasn't been doing that. I have this white basket that sits on my cutting table at all times. I'm constantly adding to it and taking away from it because this is my palette of choice. And I'll drop some pictures in here of some quilts that I've made using this basket. But um, if you haven't been collecting for a long time and you want to try to make this quilt scrappy, I wanted to let you know about two lines of fabric that you might look into. One of them is called B Backgrounds by Lori Holt for Riley Blake. And it is um, white fabrics with small prints on them and they're really cute. I actually have some in this quilt and another one that you might look into is called Hush Hush. It's also by Riley Blake. It just came out um, in the last month or two here in 2021, but it's got white and cream with small prints on it and they're, they're both really pretty and would work for this quilt. Um, but I also realize there are people out there who don't like scrappy and since this is block one of two um, in the next video for block two I will be giving the yardage requirements for um, if you're not going to make it scrappy and that will be after October 26, 2021. So if you're watching this video um, before October 26, 2021, there's no link in the description box for block two. After that, after October 26, I will put a link to block two so you can go over there and get those measurements and, and see the other, the other block. Um, and I think that an idea for if you don't have um, print fabrics like the red in this quilt, um, a good idea for building a stash would be um, the website quiltedtwins.com. She's got fabric really cheap and she's also put together some bundles. So let's get back to making this quilt. All right, let's get started. Now there's, there's many different ways that you can make pinwheels, but I pretty much do it um, the same way every time. Today, I'm gonna show you the two ways that I use most often. The first one is to use this line on the bed of my sewing machine. And we're just gonna grab a white fabric and a red fabric. And we don't need to draw any lines, but we need to take the two fabrics and put them right sides together. And we're going to put it in here diagonally. And I'm lining up the, this top point with the quarter inch, my quarter inch foot. If you don't have a quarter inch foot, then put it where it's, this point is pointing at the, um, the quarter inch that you know where it's at on the bed of your machine but I'm lining up with the quarter inch on my edge of my foot. And then down here, I'm lining up the point with this far line on this tape that I have. This tape that I have is by Cluck Cluck Sew. Now this is new to me. This is only the second time that I've used it, I think. And there's 10 yards on this roll and we'll see how long it lasts. But you could also use just a piece of tape and draw a line on it or just use the edge of the tape. Um, there's several different ways to make that line on the bed of your machine. Okay, so I've got it set at a quarter inch and I'm just gonna sew. Okay, and I'm just gonna take it and flip it around and when we flip it around, it puts us in the right spot to where our seams over here that we just sewed and we're gonna do the same thing. Line up the tip with the edge of your quarter inch foot or the, the point on your machine where you know there's a quarter inch and then line up this tip with that line. And we're just gonna, we're watching down here. We aren't paying any attention up there anymore what we're doing. And we're just going to keep, make sure that that, whoops, that got off a little bit. Make sure that that, um, 
tip that stays on that quarter inch line. Let's hope that doesn't mess up my, no, it doesn't look like it's going to. So now what I'm going to do is cut right in between those two lines. You could use a rotary cutter if you want, but uh, I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm a rebel. So we're just cutting in between there. And then we're going to take these and press them to the red side. Okay, we'll set those aside and then we'll pick up the other two. Okay, on the second half square triangle, we're going to take our ruler and line it up with the tip of the square on this end of the square and on this end of the square and that end of the square. And we're just going to take a regular old pencil and draw a diagonal line from corner to corner. Now you could use a, a water soluble marker or a Frixon pen, it doesn't matter. Pick that and put it back there. Put them right sides together. And this time we're gonna sew a quarter inch away from that drawn line. Line it up back there. I got one. And the same thing, just flip it around there and we're just automatically lined up, ready to sew again. Put that foot down on that quarter or that line that we drew and And then again, we're going to cut right down the middle, but we've got a line this time to follow. Just follow that line, cut on it, and press to the red, and then we'll square these up. All right, we're going to trim these up to three and a half, so we need to find the edge of our ruler that has the ones on it. Of course, it's the last corner that I flipped to. And I'm lining up that 45 degree line with that seam. And I'm making sure that the three and a half inch line is inside that fabric so we can trim up all four sides. Then I'm going to turn it around and do the other two sides lining up that diagonal line and then lining up the three and a half inch mark with the three and a half inch line directly on it just okay then trim the other two sides just that easy or you could use a locking half square triangle ruler. Now this one I've made and I will put a link to the video down below. And what you do is you just push it right up against that line and it locks in place. And you do the same thing. Make sure that the three and a half inch line is inside your fabric. And see I can slide it up and down that that seam because it's locked into place. Okay, then I'm just going to trim off the excess. Now the great thing about this is that you slide this ruler up that seam and just give it a little turn and then you can trim the other side. Now I have, let me move this, I think I'm getting out of picture. I have put um, some glow line tape on here just so um, it's quicker for me. I'm sliding it down that seam lining up the three and a half inch line with the edge of my fabric and trimming. Now once you get used to doing this, this makes it so much faster to trim half square triangles. Okay, so this is going to be a super scrappy quilt. I made some more half square triangles and added them to what I have. That way every fabric in this block is doesn't match. So Let's hope I can keep that up throughout the quilt, right? <laughs> okay, now we're going to make our pinwheel. And this goes this way. 
and then this one would go this way and this one would point up. Alrighty then. So we're just going to flip it over on top and match up these seams down here at the bottom. And I like to put a pin right there so those nest together. Did I, did I do that right or did I mess it up? No, it's right. <laughs> Sometimes I have a problem getting these to the sewing machine without messing them up. You guys do that? <laughs> All right, so we've got it pinned and I'm not going to pin the top. All right, and then we'll just pick up the next two, flip it over. Nest up those seams and put a pin in the bottom. I always like to pin the bottom. Make sure those seams are coming together and if they don't that's okay. No quilt is perfect, especially one that you're making on video. <laughs> it always goes wrong then. Yay! We did it. Okay, I'm just going to cut those apart and then I'm going to press to the red fabric. Then we'll nest those together and put a pin in it so they don't shift, which they shouldn't because those seams will be um, going in this way and the feed dogs will kind of like push those together but I like to pin them anyway just to be on the safe side because if it can go wrong it will especially during this video <laughs> that's how it always is this is the third take guys the dog was barking the husband was mowing outside my so or my sewing room window Okay, here we go. Okay, to get these little seams, now what we're going to do is pop this seam open. This is going to reduce some bulk. What I like to do is just push this side this way and this side that way and most of the time those stitches will just let go because I was sewing with a 2.5 stitch length so they'll just let go and pop open. If they don't just get you a little pair of scissors get in there and cut those first little few threads or use a um, seam ripper to pull them out. Then just smush it and turn it over and press those seams towards the red which they're automatically doing and we got ourselves a cute little pinwheel block. So we'll put it up there on our board. Oh it's looking cute. Alright so let's get those outer borders put on and we'll be done with this block. I told you guys it was super quick, super easy. It just doesn't get much easier than this. So we're going to take our seed fabrics and sew them to each side. And when I've got a solid piece of fabric, I, I usually sew that solid piece of fabric on the bottom. That way I don't have to worry about my seams flipping. So I'm just going to go ahead and pin both of these on here. All right, now we're just going to press those seams out. Get those next two pieces and sew them on.
Okay, there we go. It's just that easy. Press those seams out and we got one block done. These go together lickety split. I think you're going to love making them and when you're chain piecing them instead of doing one block at a time, they go even faster. So let's put it up there. Oh, look at that. Look at that. It's going to be sweet. I've made a PDF for you to print out with all the instructions. It's got the cutting instructions. There's the cutting instructions for one block if you just want to make one block. And I also have the amounts for um, the entire quilt. All right, that's it. Thanks for stopping by my little spot in Podunk. Um, if you could, leave a comment below and tell me what it is that you would like to learn in quilting that you haven't been able to find out there. Um, leave me a comment and I'll do what I can to, to help you out. That's why I'm here. That's what I love doing is making quilts and helping other people make quilts. So until next time guys, stitch up something sweet. I love you. Bye-bye.